One of the greatest mistakes believers make is to confess their faith in the word of God, but at the same time, contradicting themselves and what they're saying because they're doing the wrong things, their actions. We say we are trusting God to provide for our financial needs, but we're also worrying about how we're going to pay our bills. One minute we confess that the word of God is true, and the next we repudiate everything we've said by wrong actions. Our actions must correspond with our beliefs if we are to receive from God. So faith made perfect in the book of James chapter 2, verse 14 to 22. And I'll, you know, use more, more vernacular language as I go. What does, it, what does it benefit you, brothers and sisters? Though you may say you have faith and you don't have action to go with it. What can, what, how can that faith work for him? If a brother or sister is naked and, and doesn't have even clothes on his back and they're destitute of food and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warm and filled, but you don't do anything that's necessary for the body to help that person, what good is it? Even so, faith, if it doesn't have works that go with it, is dead. Being alone. Yes, a man can say, you have faith and I have, I have works to show for it. Show me your faith without the action that goes with it and I'll show you my faith by the action that does go with it. Hmm. You believe that there is one God and you're doing, and that's very good. <laughs> Even the devils believe and they tremble. But will you know, O oh vain man, that faith without corresponding action is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified because of what he did when he had offered Isaac, his own son, on the altar? See now, faith working with works, action, and action was faith, and by that action was faith made perfect. Weymouth's translation of verse 14 and 22 reads, What good is it, my brethren, if a man professes to have faith, and yet his actions do not correspond. You notice that his faith was cooperating with his actions and that by his actions his faith was perfected. Some have thought the book of James was written about salvation and was addressed to unbelievers. However, James was not writing to the unsaved because he says, believers, he said, what does it profit my Brothers, James was writing to his brothers and sisters in Christ, pointing out that faith without corresponding actions won't work for them, even though they are believers. Mm -hmm. Jesus, James said, be doers of the word. We've all heard that, I suspect, who are watching this. Be doers of the word and not listeners only, in one ear and out the other, deceiving yourself, deluding yourself. The, the New Heart English Bible says, deluding your own selves. There are many self-deluded people who blame their problems on the devil, or some individual, when really they have deluded themselves. This is a tough word. This is because they are not doers. They don't do what the word is telling them to do. 
the actions of a doer of the word coincide with his words, his testimony, his confession. So the storms of life, Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will compare him, liken him unto a wise man that built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it did not fall down, for it was founded upon the rock. Again, I'm changing the language to more informal English. And everyone that hears these sayings that I'm saying, says Jesus, and does them not shall be like a foolish, a fool, a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. Ah, oh, that's so good. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, crashed to the ground, and great was the fall of it. The storms of life come, oh, do they ever come? Don't we know that? The storms of life come to all of us. They may be storms of sickness, financial difficulty, family problems, or some other test. It isn't the storms of life that defeat us, however. If storms defeated us, they would defeat us all of us. No, it's our, our reaction to the storms that defeat us. As the winds blow and the floods come, he who is a doer of the word will hold fast to his confession of faith. He knows God cannot fail. If sickness comes, he stands his ground and refuses to accept it. Others may be defeated in the same test exactly. Those who are not defeated by life's storms act on God's word. Now, what does that mean? Those who are defeated may truly be saved, yet their actions do not correspond to their faith. The same wind, the same storm came upon both houses. The reason one was destroyed and the other wasn't is because the wise man was a doer of the word and the foolish man was not. The sand, if you're not a doer of the word, you're building everything on sand. Many profess Christ and declare they believe the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, yet they are not doers of the word. They are talkers about the word. There is a difference. The talkers have mentally assented, agreed that the word of God is true, but it doesn't do them any good because they are not making it their own. They are not claiming its promises for themselves. Trusting in the Lord is trusting in his word. The way to make God's word your own is to act upon it. Do what it says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. You cannot trust in the Lord without trusting his word. God and his word are one just as you and your word are one. If your word is not good, you are not good. And how many of you have people that you know in your life who say they're going to do something or come over to meet you and they never show up? You cannot trust in the Lord without trusting the word, his word. God and his word are one, just as you and your word are one. And if that's you, 
pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and stop doing that. I had to make a big adjustment to get to my hairdresser on time because I was always late, always late. And I just, all of this, one day I was so convicted and I thought, I'm not going to be late. I'm going to, and you know, God honored my desire to keep my word with precious Mrs. Lee. <laughs> and so I'm always on time now. Hallelujah. It doesn't do them any good because they, they do not, are not making the word of God their very own. They are not claiming its promises. Trusting in the Lord is trusting in his word. The way to make God's word your own is to act upon it. Do what it says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not onto your own understanding, Proverbs 3, 5. You cannot trust in the Lord without trusting his word. And, and His God and his word are one, which I've just read. Just as you and your word are one. If your word is not good, then you are not good. That's a tough one. If, you're, <clears throat> if God's word isn't any good, then God isn't any good. But his word is good, and he watches over his word to perform it. Mm. Then said the Lord unto me, you have well seen. I will hasten my word to perform it. That's Jeremiah 1.12. Isn't that neat? God said to Jeremiah, you have well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. I lost my place here. Uh, the New Heart English Bible reads, I watch over my word to perform it. I watch over my word. <sighs> like a hen watches over her chicks, I watch over my word to perform it. If you don't take the word to be yours, God doesn't have anything to use. Thank you, God. I receive your word. Hallelujah. And if you're out there and are, are moved a bit, lift your hand and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I receive your promises for me. <sighs> Let me find my place again. <clears throat> he wants you to have what his word promises, but if you don't act upon his word, then he doesn't have anything to work with. Hmm. God doesn't have anything to use to bring good to your life. When I trust in the word with all my heart, stop leaning upon human reasoning and stop looking to people for deliverance. I have actions that correspond with my faith. My actions are in perfect fellowship with my confession of faith. Listen to that. When I trust in the word with all my heart, I stop looking to my mind, figuring it out, human reasoning. I stop that. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you. I receive that. And stop looking to people to help me. I have actions that correspond with my faith. I believe that God's word is true in my body and in my bank account. It's true. God's word is true in your body and in your bank account and in your family. God's word is the truth. When I trust in the word with all my heart, stop leaning on my human reasoning. I just read this. And stop looking to people for deliverance. I have actions that correspond with my faith. In other words, those are the things we're doing to correspond our actions with the word. We stop looking for other, other, other escapes, other answers, other help. We believe mm, that God's word is sufficient. Wow. It has taken some of us a long time to learn this. It will take others longer, but let's all make it because they have been walking in the wrong pathway. Their minds are so cluttered with human ideas, human reasoning, figuring it, figuring it all out on the human level, going to every MD website in the world to figure out where this pain come from, came from, looking at all these medicines and seeing what works for you. Whoo, 
their minds are so cluttered with human reasoning. Now, I'm not saying it's all bad. I'm just saying it's human reasoning can occupy, we can have, that can be a full-time job, just figuring things out with our minds. But that's not, that's not faith. God's word says that Ellen is healed and Ellen is prosperous and that he delights above all things that Ellen is healed and prosperous. So people's minds are so cluttered with human reasoning that it will take time to renew their minds with the word of God until their actions correspond with their confession of faith. And again, I encourage everybody to go to the internet and find 101 Healing Scriptures by Keith Moore. Or you can go to, to the same scriptures, 101 Healing Scriptures that, that um, Kenneth Copeland read, reads um, on a YouTube video. Get, the, get that word inside. Have something that you're building on so that you can trust that God's word is the truth about your health. Until there are corresponding actions, there will be continual failure in life. I can confess and say that God is the strength of my life, but if I continue to talk about my weakness and lack of faith, I will be defeated because there is no corresponding action. You can just say it, you know, oh yeah, I know God is the strength of my life, but you don't know what I'm going to. I mean, but you don't know the pain that I have. You don't know, you don't know, you don't know. But God's word is the thing you have to build, build a foundation with. Reporting to human methods, resorting to human methods instead of trusting the Lord brings confusion to my spirit. Wow. It brings weakness and failure in my life. That's Brother Hagen talking. That's very important. Resorting to human methods instead of trusting the Lord brings confusion to my spirit. It brings weakness and failure to my life. There is just one thing to do. Turn to God's word and act upon it. Or our worst enemy is the flesh. The flesh and natural reasoning limit us to our own abilities. We look to circumstances, problems, tests, and storms, and we say, I can't. The language of doubt, the flesh, and the senses is, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I haven't the ability, the opportunity, or the strength. I can't, I can't. But the language of faith says, I can. I can, I can, I can, I can. You hear that, devil? I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And remember, sickness is all part of the curse. And Satan is the one that ushered in the curse to all mankind. So, I know in my knower that Satan's behind every sickness, everyone. Hmm. Ah. We have the same access to Christ as Brother Hagen says here. He says, Brother Hagen said, I can do all things through Christ and you too. Paul said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, He's a new creature. Old things are, oh, that's so good, old ways of thinking and acting and behaving. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. You are a new creature in Christ. Christ doesn't belong to Paul any more than he belongs to you. And that's Paul talking. Paul is saying, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Old things are become new. And that doesn't just mean our sin nature and the bad things we did and were involved with. 
This means our old way of thinking about where our help comes from, who is the source of life and strength. Mm. So old ways of reasoning it out, scientific evaluation, that old things are passed away. Everything is new. Now we know there is a, uni a God of the universe who is real and he sits upon the throne and he'll do whatever we ask mm, when we ask believing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, you are a new creature in Christ, like I just said. The language of faith says, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. Our Father strengthens me. I cannot be conquered. And I cannot be defeated. Say that. I cannot be conquered, devil. I cannot be conquered, Satan. And I cannot be defeated. Mm. Well, let's see where I was. Greater... Uh, <clears throat> Where was I? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are you are fort and that's first John four four. And you are fortified from within. Hallelujah. Fortified, strengthened. A muscle man inside. You are fortified from within. Doesn't matter what the outside looks like. I have learned how to put the greater one to work for me. Not only am I born of God and a partaker of his love, but I have dwelling in me the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead. I have God's wisdom, strength, and ability in me. I am learning how to let his wisdom govern govern my intellect. Isn't that cool? I am learning how to let his wisdom govern my intellect. I am allowing him to govern my mind and speak through my lips. I am daring to think God's thoughts after him. I am daring to say, in the presence of my enemies, God is my ability. True, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Psalm 23, 5. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 27, 1. God has made me greater than my enemies. God has made me put my heel on the neck of weakness, fear, and inability. The strength of God is mine. I am not trusting in my own strength because the Bible doesn't say a word about my being strong. It says that God is my strength. Thank you, God. Many people are struggling and are trying to do something themselves. They get up to testify and they, they ask everyone to pray that they will hold out to the end. But God doesn't want you to hold out like that. He wants you to let him do it. Wow. Wrap yourself up in the promises of God. I once heard the story of a man who was walking down a railroad track with a pack on his back. When he came to a section gang repairing the railroad, he thought the foreman was going to order him off the track. So he showed him a ticket. The foreman told him that I didn't give him the right to, that the ticket didn't give him the right to walk down the track. Many people are on the right track but they ought to be riding instead of walking. <gasps> wow. He had a ticket to ride, like the song says. And instead of riding, he was walking with a pack on his back. Oh, many people are on the right track, <laughs> 
but they ought to be riding instead of walking. Also, they should check their baggage because the Bible says they don't have to carry it. Casting all your cares and your baggage on him, for he cares for us, for me, for you. Cast all your cares upon. <gasps> Thank you, God. I cast all my cares upon you, for you care for us, for me. That's First Peter 5, 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I preached myself happy and encouraged and strengthened. And I, I just hope from the very, from my sincerest heart, I hope it, it is the same for you.